Have I ever told you about the time my wife got assaulted by a magpie in Australia last year? Well, I'll tell you what, we'll save that for another day. But today, we're going to check out everything you need to know about the Aussie magpie. If you do enjoy this, make sure you like and subscribe. Go to Charlie and Rob to check out our vlogs. Let's go. Do you communicate with family members through song? Have you ever eaten earthworms for sustenance? Are you tempted to plunge upon your enemies from great heights? Then you might have something in common with the Australian magpie. <laughs> These flying Oreos are known for their complex harmonies, but they're smart cookies too, able to recognize over a hundred different human faces. In this video, we're gonna learn a little bit about these creatures and why they're considered to be one of Australia's most iconic birds. It's them or the abyss, right? Ibis. They're just, look, I've done magpie videos before and I, I just, they're quite scary. Funny if they're not attacking you, but scary if they are attacking you. So, you know, swings and roundabouts really. In a grand old British tradition of unimaginative names for exotic animals, the bird was named the magpie after its European namesake. Despite its similar colouring, it has no relation to the Eurasian species. Their actual closest relatives are two fellow Australian birds, the currawong, a highly underrated bird in my opinion, and the butcher bird. The less said about you, the better. <laughs> Magpies are also often mistaken from a distance with these guys, magpie larks, or as they're otherwise known, peewees. There were once thought to be three separate species of magpie, but now they're considered to be just one with nine subspecies. You don't- I want to know, so over in the UK, I don't know if it's just the UK, but I was always taught as a child that when you see one magpie, that's obviously Europe, European magpie, you say like, bonjour, Mr. Magpie. And then when you see another one, you say, say something similar, and then say, say something similar for a third one, and then good luck nonsense. Is that something you do for magpies over there? Say bonjour, Mr. Magpie. Sorry, it might be totally unrelated. You don't need to know all of them, but there is a distinction between the northern black-backed magpies, which are smaller, and the southern white-backed ones, who are larger. Magpies are a tastefully thick bird at around 40 centimeters long on average, with wingspans up to 85 centimeters. Their most distinctive feature is, of course, their striking black and white plume. Black and white. Youngsters tend to have more grey mixed in with their feathers. This one's a female, and how do I know that? What gives it away is the nape. It's white in males and grey in females. Maggies have a lifespan of around 25 years, although some have been reported to live up to 30 years of age, just long enough to ponder what you're actually doing with your life. The Aussie magpie has managed to conquer just about every corner of the Australian continent, except for the top end, the big old deserts, and this specific area of Tasmania. What actually goes on here? Why? It's just one of life's mysteries. Do magpies not leave Australia? Because birds migrate, right? Surely Australian magpies leave Australia at some stage. Or maybe the climate in Australia is, you know, such a mix that they don't really have to. I don't know. These are questions for you to answer in the comments. So just do it now. And also like and subscribe. The magpie's most favoured habitat type are open grasslands dotted with tall trees. They use the trees for nesting and the grasslands for grazing on bugs. Humans, cheeky little buggers, have unwittingly created the perfect magpie habitats by building parks and golf courses with these exact conditions. Who's controlling who? <laughs> The English bird fancier John Gould is quoted as saying, To describe the note of this bird is beyond the power of my pen. I'm sure he sounded like that. It's hard to argue with Mr. Gould. Magpies have a complex song which can vary as much as four octaves in pitch. In Latin, the magpie's biological name, Gymnarina tibicen, literally means bare-nosed flute player. The magpie can mimic over 30 species of birds, as well as other animal calls and even human sounds like this. <laughs> Maggies have a number of different calls for different purposes. Now you can't hear this, but literally just as the bird was making that noise, an ambulance or police car has just gone past my house. That was spook. That is spooky. That is really, really a weird coincidence. It's only a coincidence, but that is a weird coincidence. Unbelievable, Jeff. This is 
You might think this one is a lovely morning song. But it's actually a territorial claim meant for other magpies. Basically, this is our turf. Piss off. This one means danger. And, if you're a parent, you already know what this one means. Magpies are omnivorous. I reckon I can work this one out. I reckon they eat worms, insects, and people. That, that, that's, that, I think that one's an easy one. I don't even necessarily need to watch the rest of this bit. Their diet is perfectly balanced and contains all the main food groups. Insects, small lizards, mice, nuts and seeds, and even other bird eggs. Magpies will stride along the ground searching for insects. A behaviour you'll notice is that they cock their heads to the side before striking. This is because they can hear the sound of worms under the ground. They will also sometimes venture into open houses to beg for food. Now it's not recommended to feed wild magpies, much like with the Darrows who hang around at the local train station. If they become accustomed to human handouts and the handouts stop, they can become aggressive. Although, between you and me, I do like to give them a cheeky feed now and again. Don't do it. It's Maggies like live in Don't groups of up to 24 birds. And get this. The collective noun for magpies is tidings. Magpies are highly territorial birds. They reside all year round in territories that are viciously defended by all group members. As humans, we may not be able to see it, but there are invisible borders which the birds patrol. They also take hygiene very seriously and will often be found puffing up their feathers and using their beaks to remove parasites. Another behaviour that I noticed was that they wipe their beaks repeatedly on branches and fence posts. It's generally accepted that this is a way of cleaning their beaks, but it could also be a way of sharpening them too. Magpies <laughs> can recognise up to 100 <laughs> unique human faces. They will know all the faces of the people who live in their local territory, and they can remember faces up to five years. Because of this, treating magpies with respect will earn you their friendship. Equally though, if you treat them with disrespect, they will hold a grudge against you and be more likely to swoop you. Speaking of which... Yeah, let's get some, in get some TikTok feeds. Oh no, this music's gonna get me done. It's gonna get me done. Back to Charlie. Should you want me to explain, Charlie? I will. Why not? Screw it. Let's do it. Um, so last year when we were in Australia, we got diverted to Canberra. Our, we were going from Sydney to Adelaide and the flight was cancelled. So we had to go to Canberra for the day. And we thought, let's go to the old, you know, the parliament, the old parliament building. And we got a bit bored. So we thought, well, let's take a scooter ride over to the town centre to get some food. And so I had a scooter, Charlie had a scooter. I was a bit faster than Charlie and I was scooting ahead all the same. I hear her screaming and literally a, 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 I turned around. I was like, I knew exactly what it was because I've learned about these little buggers. I went to get my phone out and it was too late. She got swooped once and then she got swooped twice. And the second time she the, the, literally the magpie took a chunk out of the helmet. It was hilarious. She was like stuck. I said, just move, just move. You've got to go. You've got to go. Get out of its territory. I can't, I can't. Oh, absolutely hilarious. So this is what I was talking about. If you are the one being swooped, it is petrifying. If you are the one watching someone be swooped, it's hilarious. Yeah, let's continue. Interestingly, magpies don't actually swoop that much. Anticlimactic, I know. It's yes, only do. the males that will swoop during the breeding season, and only 11% of them do it. And there are worse things than being swooped by magpies, like syphilis. Let's talk about magpie sex is a line that I often use to entice women into the bedroom with varying degrees of success. Magpies generally mate for life. If a male dies while there are chicks in the nest, the female will find a new mate. Her new partner will protect the babies, even though he's not genetically related to them. Female magpies wow. lay three to five eggs, bluish green in color. It generally takes 20 days for the eggs to hatch. The chicks are fed by their mother and are able to fly in four weeks. But unfortunately, many don't make it this far and are killed by weather conditions, predators, and human activity. For the next two years, the young magpies are taken under the wing of their mother. 
she'll provide for and nurture the juveniles until they're eventually forced by their parents to leave home. They'll then join a group of up to 50 other single magpies, essentially a magpie share house. They'll stay here until they can gain a place in a new territory as an adult breeding bird. Oh, that's interesting. Not the first bit. I think the first bit is mostly the same for most animals where the mum basically takes care of them until they're old enough to get out of the house. Uh, and it seems us humans take a bit longer, don't we? But um, in the other animal kingdom, I say the other animal, in the animal kingdom, um, it's get out. We've done enough for you. Get out. Uh, but that's interesting about how lots of single males end up it's like in a little dorm room, isn't it? It's like they've gone off to college and or university, as we say in the UK. And, you know, you get your dorm rooms and stuff. And uh, that's basically what that is until you qualify and, and you find a, a female. Yeah. And then you rent and you lose all your money or you're sensible and you buy. Let's continue. I had a lot of fun making this video. Oh, I spent good. over a month filming magpies in different areas and I got to know my local magpies pretty well. It was just interesting observing the behaviours that I'd read about and some that I'd never seen before. There's a lot to admire about magpies. They're curious, intelligent and charismatic. It's not hard to see why they've had such a cultural impact in this country. That's all for this video. But before I go, I'm going to leave you with some fun facts. Please do. Go, go, go. Magpies are known as sunbathing in small groups and birds soak up the sun rays. They enter a trance-like state. One man living in Canberra who witnessed them describe magpies holding oh, It's going too fast. It's going too fast. Let's see. Individually, each magpie would step forward to peck the magpie in the centre of the circle. After that, the magpie flew away, leaving the defeated magpie behind. Wow. Magpies have outwitted scientists by helping each other remove tracking devices. <gasps> Little buggers. Just, you do it. Do it yourself now. I, I hope this music isn't going to do you. Yeah. Basically, they're psychos. <laughs> oh my god, bless me. Um, that's all that thought of magpies and the excitement of coming down under. Look. They are scary ass birds. The ones in the UK are not scary. They're quite small. Don't even fly near you. Go near them. They are. But these these are scary little birds, and they're not little. They're giant things that will swoop and kill you if they can. That's basically what they do. But they are very clever. You can tell they are very clever birds. They, um, you know, they get to know people's faces, which is pretty clever for a, for a creature that has such a small brain. So, yeah, fair play to them. They're doing well for themselves. Now, as I said, we are coming back to Australia. So what I need you to do is go to Charlie and Rob on YouTube or charlieandrob.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All of our vlogs from last year's trip to Australia are on there already. And then obviously all of the vlogs that we film this year will be on there too. Thank you so much again for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.